the argument from uh, complexity, uh, mm -hmm. what did you call it, the tele something? The teleological argument. That's telos it. is a word meaning design or purpose, yes. That as well as the cosmological argument. They're great arguments for deism, uh, showing that there has to have been some sort of cause. But all it boils down to is an argument from ignorance, which, as you probably well know, is a logical fallacy. You're saying, I don't know how this came to be, therefore we're going to accept this statement. So you really can't be intellectually honest if you're saying, from a philosophical standpoint or even a scientific standpoint, that this is proof that a god exists. Because you're simply saying, I don't know, and then jumping to, well, okay, it must be this. You're saying that this is a god of the gaps argument. That's what you're trying to say. What's going on, guys? So this is the primary argument against theists. They always claim that we're arguing from a place of ignorance or the God of the gaps theory. So when a theist talks about God or evidence in scientific terms, they say, well, you're arguing from ignorance. You're, you're assuming God because you don't know this information. This information, there's a gap in knowledge. So you just insert God there to fill the gap because you just don't know. Well, they assume that Christians don't know. They, they assume that we don't know. We do know. It's not intellectually dishonest to say that God did it because it's obvious. Everything in reality is pointing to God. Living material does not come from non-living material. Creation demands a creator. Just like a building is proof of a builder, it demands a builder. You just can't have buildings come out of, of, out of nowhere. You can't have living material just be produced from nothing. So the fact that we have life is proof that something created it. It's intellectually dishonest to say, I don't know how the universe came into being, but exclude God as a possible solution or ignore the evidence. The evidence, for example, complexity, the evidence in DNA. Listen to how Frank Turk responds to the God of the Gap argument and completely dismantles it with DNA. Okay, exactly. that's, that's not what we're saying. Let me, let me give you just two minutes on this. You see this? I do. This is an amoeba, something the Darwinists say we all evolve from. And uh, notice An it ancestor does, of the amoeba. Yeah. Now, now, notice it doesn't say made by Yahweh or made by natural forces on it, right? Yes. So, always the scientist is going to have to make an interpretation. In other words, science doesn't say anything. Scientists do. But this was considered no big deal back in Darwin's day. This was considered to be a blob of protoplasm and maybe natural forces could come together and put this together and through natural selection we could all be here. There's no need for a designer in other words. Today we know that that's not the case. In fact, inside of this little amoeba is something that clearly has the marks of design. In order to show you this, I got to take you to your breakfast table. How many people in here like alphabet cereal? Let's suppose you want to have a bowl of alphabet cereal. You're a teenager. You come downstairs to have a bowl of alphabet cereal, and you see that the cereal's knocked over on the table, and right in the middle of the table, the letters spell, take out the garbage, mom. What are you going to assume? The cat knocked the box over? Earthquake shook the house? No, you're going to say that that's intelligent design from an intelligent being, mom. Do we just lack a natural explanation when we see take out the garbage, mom? Or is that positive evidence for an intelligent being? Well, in and of itself, it's not evidence for an intelligent being. We can make the inference because it's a natural process. Um, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. What was that? <laughs> we, we can make an inference. We, that, it, you always make inferences. Yes. Are you inferring that an earthquake did this or that mom did this? You're inferring that your mom did this because you have evidence of things like this not happening outside of intelligence. That's exactly the else. point. However, you got it. With the universe, we only have one universe. Hold on, hold on. I'm not done. Okay, this, okay. I'm just saying okay. that this is evidence of intelligent design and you agree with that. Sure. Okay. Well, if this is intelligence of, or evidence of an intelligent design, then DNA must be as well. Because you see, DNA is a message like take out the garbage mom, but in a human being, it's three billion letters long. So if something that's what? 15 letters long requires an intelligence, then something 15 billion letters or, or, 13, or 3 billion letters long requires an intelligence. You say, well, maybe it started simpler. Like uh, maybe it started in an amoeba. The problem in an amoeba has a thousand volumes of an encyclopedia worth of information in it. The simplest code is thousands of volumes long. So if take out the garbage mom shows there must be an intelligent being, 
then it seems to me that a message much longer also requires an intelligent being. And by the way, it's not me who came up with a thousand volumes in a microscopic amoeba. It's Richard Dawkins himself. Yes. I really thought that was a great explanation. And there's no ignorance behind that. It's either one of two options. DNA was designed or it happened randomly. Now, what are the odds that I go outside and my leaves randomly fall in the order, please rake me today? What are the odds of that happening? The odds are astronomically low to the point where it would never happen. What are the odds of the DNA molecule, the cold happening randomly? What are the odds of that? That's not ignorant. That's just common sense. It did not happen from nothing. It was designed. So when we infer to design we are not creating a god of the gaps argument here we are saying that we have positive evidence for intelligence my only problem here is extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence take out the garbage mom isn't all too extraordinary but an entire universe you're attributing to a creator for which there's no evidence for which you've said is outside of time outside of space doesn't or uh, isn't made of matter right so you're trying to prove what is in its nature, unprovable. Why is it unprovable? We're, we're, we are using spaceless, timeless, immaterial things right now. Like what? The laws of logic. True, but they're conceptual. They are conceptual, but they're not just conceptual. In other words, they would exist even if no humans existed. They in and of themselves are conceptual, but for them to be applied, there has to be uh, a physical being, a physical mind to, you know, make the computations and apply the laws of logic. Well, of course, you have to have a mind to apply the laws of logic, but the laws of logic exist even if no minds existed yes. on the earth. But the laws of logic exist even if no minds existed yes. on the earth. Right? So they're not just human conceptions. They are grounded in a mind. You're correct. What mind? The immaterial, spaceless, timeless mind. If space, matter, and time had a beginning, what caused it? I don't know. Well, you can say, I don't know, or you can follow the evidence where it leads. Space, time, matter had a beginning, and the being must also be personal to create, to make a choice to create, must also be intelligent to put this universe together with such precision, must also be moral because we have the moral law, must also be a creator in order to create from nothing and powerful. Those are the attributes of God. Why wouldn't you just accept that? When you jump to must be personal because we exist. No, 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 not personal because we exist. Personal because, because anything exists. Okay, because he made us the way we are. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Personal to go from a state of nothingness to a state of creation. The being had to make a choice. Gravity doesn't make choices, right? Okay. So a, I'm, I'm a, still a not personal how being. It actually lines up logically. It seems like kind of a jump just based on wishful thinking. It all boils down to an argument from ignorance. I don't know. No, 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 no. So it's, this has to be No, it. no, no. Will, Will, it's not an argument from ignorance. There's positive evidence that a spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful, moral, personal, intelligent creator exists. That's what we've been given here. Just as much evidence that there's a spaceless, immaterial, flying spaghetti monster that exists. No, 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 no. Because a, the flying spaghetti monster is a being inside the universe, if he exists at all, made of spaghetti. But <laughs> spaghetti by, had a beginning. It's by material. His nature, he's outside of the universe. He simply chooses to appear to us in the form of spaghetti. Well, if, if you, if you want to call the God of the Bible the flying spaghetti monster, be my guest, but you're not going to find it in the scriptures. The point is simply that you can't prove something that's immaterial. You can claim to make these blanket statements and just jump from one claim to another, Will, but it's not proof. Will, Will, what do you mean by proof? Physical proof. What, what does that mean, physical proof? Is the universe not physical? The universe is physical. Okay, well, that's physical proof right there. When an atheist and unbeliever, when they hear this truth, they, their brain, it, it, it malfunctions. and they, So they go to mocking. They, they mock Christians all, well, maybe it's the flying spaghetti monster. Maybe maybe it's fair, maybe it's Santa Claus. You know, those are just, just red herrings to try to distract from the point. The point is, seems like reality, seems like nature, seems like this world we live in is, is pointing to God. The Bible says that the heavens declare his handiwork. Creation declares, points to, reveals his invisible attributes, his nature, his divine power. It's evident in nature. Well, let me ask you a question. Okay. Honest answer. Honest. If Christianity were true, would you become a Christian? 
Well, I, I have to preface this by saying I would believe it was true if there was evidence for it, but I would not be a Christian. Why not? I don't believe with uh, I don't believe a lot of the things that the Bible says to be moral. So you have your own moral standard by which you judge the my, Bible. My moral standard is based on empathy, emotion. What would I want them to do to me? Well, Jesus said something like that. That's pretty good. So did Confucius. Yeah, that's that's called and Aristotle. The, that's called the the Gold golden rule, rule yeah. which is known even without the Bible. We know yes. that. Well, you know, Hit, 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 Hitler said what would be best is to kill all the undesirables, and that would be best for, for the human race. Did he have the authority to say that? He had the authority to say that, but it doesn't necessarily make him correct. Well, there has to be a standard outside of Hitler and me and you that establishes what is correct then. That's what we mean by God. Now we get to the heart of the matter. The matter is the heart. He says if Christianity were true, he still wouldn't become a Christian. Well, this is no longer a debate. This is no longer a argument in good faith. This is somebody just saying, I don't want it to be true, and I'm going to argue tooth and nail. I'm going to just disregard the evidence. I'm going to throw out common sense. I'm going to abandon all reason because I'm angry. I don't believe in God, but I'm angry at him. I hate him. I believe God. I, I believe I have a higher moral standard than God, yet he appeals to the golden rule, something that God has revealed to humanity. So he's using God's moral standard to judge the moral standard. You know, it's just absurdity. I would just prefer if, if atheists just could be honest and say, you know, I don't like God. I don't like the Bible. I don't like the scriptures because I don't want nobody governing me. I don't want nobody to rule over me. I want to exist in my sin and pleasure and enjoy these things and not have nobody telling me what to do. That's just kind of what it boils down to. And that's fine. You have the free will to think that, but just understand this, that when you die, there is judgment. So don't trust your heart. Ask God to show you the truth. If you want to be intellectually honest, follow the evidence where it leads. Follow the arguments. Follow the historical records of Jesus, the Bible. Follow it. Look at it. There's so much resources. If you really are claiming to be intellectually honest, if you're claiming to be a reasonable person, follow the overwhelming evidence. Follow the manuscript evidence. Follow the textual evidence. Follow the scientific evidence. Follow it. And you will see that when you get to the top of the mountain, God is there. Christians are there. Nobody else is there. There's evidence for other things, but there's just so much more evidence for the God of Scripture. If you enjoyed this video and you like this content, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Like this video. I'll be back next week with another one. This is Spencer Frederick. This is about a book. Peace.